The Get to the Point Review. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Get to the Point Review podcast. I am your co-host, Kelly McKinney of Honine Productions. And I'm your other co-host, Josh Gibson from Fourth Wall Players. And this time, for our second episode of Season 2, we are joined by a very special guest. With us, we have Lawrence Lee Wallace. He is an award-winning writer, director, producer, and actor. Mm -hmm. He's been working both in uh, indie and mainstream film off and on for how long now, Lawrence? Oh, for about 20 years. 20 years. 20, long 20 years. years. Yeah. Twice my experience. Twice my experience in years. And uh, Lawrence is, uh, me and Lawrence have worked together off and on ever since uh, 2015 is when I have on here. How, how are you doing, Lawrence? How has it been? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, things are going pretty well. Thanks. It's great to see you, man. Great to see I know. you guys. It's been a minute. It's, it's been, been a while. Been a yeah. I know. Uh, I'm, now, I'm glad I, that the pandemic didn't take you out. Oh, yes. you know. <laughs> it hasn't taken us out yet. <laughs> right, right, right. I've got that natural smoker's immunity. <laughs> uh, right, right. You know, it's, it's really hard to get past all of those carcinogenic clogged. Uh, you basically, yeah, you have a wall <laughs> built up. Lung sack. Exactly. Right, right. You know, the, the COVID right. can't get too deep. So right, I had right, it and it was right. like allergies or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little sniffle. A little sniffle. I just was yeah, at 80%, sniffle. you know. For right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 80% is good. It, it is. is yeah. I was still able to function completely. Right. You know, so that was pretty good. I wasn't. I slept like 18 hours a day when I had mine. <laughs> like, I wasn't serious. I never went to the hospital or anything, but yeah. Yeah. It sucked. Well, let's see. I have uh, here I'm in my notes. So a little bit more about Lawrence and his background. I have it that your earliest credit at work was uh urban scenes in 2004 mm, yeah do you have yeah, the, do you have film work that you did before that that's not credited um you know most of everything that i did before then was stage stuff was theater, okay all right you know um i did a did a lot of theater like the years before mm. i made the leap into doing my own film i was i was an actor like you said for a while right. so i was doing like other people's stuff you know um but yeah like you know mostly like yeah mostly like theater and and then i did some i was doing some modeling you know um that was back when i was young and tight you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and um, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah I, I i i really honestly i I started directing, you know, just to kind of make vehicles for myself because, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I, you know, the work just kind of started slowing down around that time, you know, around 2000. Like I wasn't getting called for stuff as much anymore, you mm -hmm. know, so it was like I, I wasn't in the position. I had actually went to L.A. and I came back and I wasn't in the position to go back to L.A. at that time. So I just started doing my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not too different from how, you know, I started, I wrote a screenplay, tried to get the movie made. It, it fell through. And when I decided I wanted to do my, I had to learn everything else, directing, yeah. Uh, yeah. camera work, all that editing, it all just kind of fell into line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very similar. And so also, yeah, I already mentioned we had worked together from 2015 to 2017 on Sunshine Day, Chirac, yeah. Girls and Rodney, and pieces of david wow yeah since then uh you just been going up and up first of all pieces of david won quite a few well-deserved awards correct mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and then after that was it dark hallways first or the girl no and um after that was the girls arriving the girl yeah girls well yes yeah yeah the girls are i, was, I had thought about that too yeah, Girls and Rodney, I mentioned. Okay, yeah, right, right. Pieces of David was before Girls and Rodney. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, see, now I've, I, that, right. that time <laughs> right. period, I get them flip flopped. Right, uh, right yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, then after that, I did the project with William Shatner um, to your last death. Ooh. To your last death. Okay, that's right. 
yeah to your last death in the animated the, film right yes yeah and so uh, w- where is that available oh um, it's on amazon it's on um it's on a bunch of different platforms actually you know okay. sweet but yeah um the main one is like amazon okay nice 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 and is that one uh, included with prime or is it have a rental fee last time i checked it was included with prime okay nice nice there yeah. we go so everybody with prime can go, go watch take, it oh, take that check that out yeah yeah check it out it, it is a it's a fun if you if you like animation you like horror and sci-fi and you like william shatner yeah it's it's good you'll love it and so then i also had seen um the girls the girl in white yes yes that is the short that's part of um, the Dark Hallways uh, anthology. That's what okay. I'm working on now. Gotcha, gotcha. The Dark Hallways. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Very cool. All right. And so today, now an, a movie that you weren't involved with that we're all supposed to watch. Our recent movie, before we get into the main topic of Black Exploit, would mm-hmm. be King Richard. Yeah. So why don't you start us off, Lawrence? What did you think of King Richard? I thought it was an excellent film. You know, I thought you know. Um, excellent, you know, biopic um, drama. I think Will Smith did an amazing job. Um, the two, you know, girls that played Venus and Serena, the mom, every, every, everyone's performance was really on point. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it, it was it was a very well crafted and just honest film. You know, an honest film about, you know. Um, as as a black man and a black father of two girls, I have two, you know, girls. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it it I I really connected to it. I I, I felt, <laughs> you know, the him, you know, really just trying to protect his daughters, just trying to protect his kids. You know what I mean? And not really knowing what to do, but kind of being in in a situation, and you, you know, you you having a plan for your kids. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you get to a point where it's like, okay, well, well what do I do now? And then you're just kind of stuck. And I kind of saw that, you know, with him in the film that he was kind of stuck at, at one point, mm-hmm. but then he did the right thing and that he let the kids kind of make up, you know, their decision on, on right. what they wanted to do. They were just as big a part of it was. So yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was good. They did a good job. Yeah, yeah, that they did a good job. Is to is an under that's the an understatement yeah, of the it year, is very right? Much. <laughs> so, so I don't know how much of a uh, our um podcast that you have listened to in the past, but we did a uh, power uh, power of the dog, uh, last podcast. And this was blew that one out of the water. I could not mm-hmm. stand like I did not like that movie at all. I mean, like again, the acting in that movie was really good. Yeah, it just it was dog, so sure. dis it was so disjointed and just not at all what it, we expected and. Yeah, you know, I yeah. thought this was much. I thought this was a fantastic film. Yeah, I think, was. yeah, yeah, that's that's an understatement. Well, and you know, obviously, we're not black fathers, but we're black. I mean, we're what? brothers. Your we're fathers. not black fathers, but we're fathers. <laughs> Your fathers uh, yeah. So I think, as fathers, like anyone that's a father, or mm-hmm. you know, that yes. I, with with father films, they end up touching me because I grew up without one. You know, mm-hmm. and then as a father, I, I feel it on two different elements. Yeah, you feel it growing as a father, up without yeah. a father and. So I really related to the Richard character as well, just because I, I still grew up in a black neighborhood and at a time in Kokomo in the 90s, the KKK were still burning crosses in people's yards and marching down Apperson Street. Like they stopped. No, they were still. No, I meant, but they the stopped 90s. since. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> seen one since. Well, <laughs> that's just because I, I haven't seen one since. Um, they're just really good at hiding, I guess. Huh? But I mean, you know, it's it's one of those just like the whole stat about, you know, black on black. Well, that happens because if you kill the people you're around, you know what I mean? Then mm-hmm. we're going to go right. out, travel out to white neighborhoods to kill people that it's, they don't know. It, the statistics right. are the same for white people. Yeah, the statistics right. are the yeah. same for white people, yeah. white on white, like, yeah. because yeah. Yeah. you're around white people. So because of that, because I was in, grew up in a black neighborhood, mm-hmm. I saw that and I could relate to the struggle. I mean, when they finally integrated the schools, I was getting beat up for having black friends. Right. white kids who i didn't know who didn't live in my neighborhood who mm-hmm. didn't know me so like i was crying when he was talking about getting beat up i was like i cried like six mm-hmm. different times yes. like yeah. in this film yeah. Yeah, hard hard um and i ended up watching it twice 
and cry both times. Yeah, I want. So I definitely want to watch it again. It was a weepy morning. Oh gosh, man. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. with my get to the point review on it, I said this is just like any other sports movie for me. I start out. The, I don't really care about, about insert sport. Then I watch the movie. I love insert sport, mm-hmm. except for I normally don't. <laughs> cry. You know, like yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it well, it was more that I think than just a sports movie. W- exactly. What I really appreciated w- one element um, that I that I really appreciated that they kind of you know put in there was you know they had the gang element, mm-hmm. you know, and you know the the guys that were like harassing them, harassing his kids, yeah. and you know beating him up and threatening them. But then later they had the gangs that were looking out for him, that was watching his back. Mm -hmm. And that's for real. That is. That's what real life. I've encountered that myself. I've encountered, you know, gang members that, you know, are are assholes and 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 fuck with you and, you know, fuck with, you know, your family and things like that. And I've encountered gang members that are looking out for the community, you know, Mm -hmm. that like, you know, will not let anybody mess with your car, your house, or if, if they see a, a member of your family being messed with, they intervene. Right. You know, I, I experienced that, you know, growing up, you know, mm-hmm. in my neighborhood. And I'm glad that they showed that because that is a real thing, you yeah. know, and, yeah. it, and it just goes to say that everybody's not one thing, you know, <laughs> like, you right. know, black people aren't on a monolith, just like white people, just like like all white people in our races, you right. know, all, you know, black people are not evil, mm-hmm. you know, harassing or, thugs. Yeah. You know? or, or, or gang members for that. <laughs> yeah. or, or even gang members yeah, at, at, right, at that right. you know, at that point. You know. Well, yeah, and I mean it all just comes from, you know, you know, ingrained bigotry and, you know. Yeah, for sure. Th- well, those sort of thoughts. I mean, and, and right. the scenes that you're talking about, what was great about that is that, you know. Even when Rock, the gang member who was harassing Tundi in the first place, mm-hmm. right. you know, once he was gone from the gang, okay, which let's talk about God intervening right there. Right. He was right. like, this yeah. is your one get out of jail free card. Mm-hmm. You need to stay focused on for your family because yeah. what he said may be a threat, but it's no different than the threats that you will get every day that you've gotten your whole life. Right. Stay focused on protecting your family. This, this is not what that looks like. And God gave him a get out of jail free card. But yes. uh, leading up to that moment, those points in the park, like as a father and as someone who grew up in a neighborhood where I was beat up on all the time, mm-hmm. like I felt the tension there. You know, you know, we had this montage of them training and then Cohen Brothers style, the music disappears mm-hmm. when the gang members pull up and it's just the silence because that's really all you hear. You were focused. You were focused. Now there's a distraction and you feel like a target. Yeah. You know, right. like I loved that. I could feel yeah. the tension in that. I've mm-hmm. experienced that. It was, this was a very relatable <clears throat> film. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's my get to the point review is said that it was, you know, sports movie because it's not right. a sports <laughs> movie. It's so right. not. It is so no. not. Yeah. Um, but I found myself like, you know, excited about the tennis because of what it meant for the characters. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Because it was their, it was their way out. And I loved that about the movie it's very easy for this to be a love fest yeah uh, yeah and in which case you get to the point review josh uh so my get to the point review um on king richard is that richard williams is not the greatest husband or person really but through his sheer will and determination as a father um he single-handedly <coughs> ensures that his two daughters become the greatest athletes ever to play the sport of tennis he knew it he knew yeah. he had it mm-hmm. he knew yeah. he had those he knew what he had yeah, and I think like it's important to clarify. So you, you're talking about like him essentially lying to Rick Macy at, to get the training, right? Right. And it was, I mean, like, it was, I mean, it just just the way that he dealt with people. In to a point, I understood. I mean, I understand where he's coming from, but the he, like he was he was going against the grain basically because he because yeah. he knew he realized even as many feathers as he had to ruffle, that was the only way to get his girls to where he wanted them to be was to bet on them. Right. Go right, all right. in, go, go all in on their talent. Them. Yeah. And once the world sees what they have, then it doesn't matter about going through like the peacocking that everyone else goes through. Yeah. And w- like for me, what part made this so inspirational was that um, it's really easy to spin this as a tiger mom slash tiger dad story. Okay. Yeah. 
if if it was the case that he's living vicariously through but his their the girls love tennis mm-hmm. you yeah. know what i mean like when it was like go play they was boom they're ready for it they were right. ready to go and play tennis that's what they wanted like, to do that's what they still want to do and he the way that he kept them from getting burnt out in their teens like in their preteens right those are really yeah brilliant the- I those are the parts really that I yeah that I really appreciated was as as much as he was focus 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 on this career you're right it was something they were interested in it, you know it wasn't necessarily only something he was pushing on them and at the same time he knew you still need time to be kids yeah. you know yeah. like you know, it's and I I thought that was an important lesson too from that movie because yeah a lot of um especially like sports parents are the way that they are you know shown in that film well yeah well, the, and like a lot of times the vicarious yeah living vicariously yeah the because pressures. they didn't quite get there the so you know i mean you see it all the time in like high school football films right yeah. like oh, the yeah. father like wants his son to be the star quarterback like he was and go and play for the denver broncos or some shit i don't know but, <laughs> i i'm hard pressed to say you know like i don't say this often this was a perfect movie like this was a perfect that my it literally only, yeah my yeah. only criticism of it was the trailer i saw the trailer six times nothing about the trailer made me want to see this movie i feel like yeah, I, yeah. yeah the trailer was trash yeah. the trailer was trash but, I but feel you like know the, but they usually are for dramas yeah that's true most, most dramas yeah, right i i yeah. feel like um the marketing itself was just not very strong because i honestly before we sat down to do it i knew that will smith was in it that's all I knew about the movie. I didn't even know it was, a, it, was it was about him being their father. And that's partially me, but it's also like Power of the Dog. I saw advertised everywhere. You know, other yeah. Oscar movies I saw advertised everywhere. Like you go to YouTube video, you can't help but see a trailer. Right. And I just don't feel like I saw that with King Richard. I saw the King Richard trailer on uh-huh. on like TV like six times. OK, six times before it was going to come out. And every single time like. After seeing the movie, though, this is what's this is what infuriates me. They need to fire their marketing person. Who yeah, cuts together the trailer. I will cut together. Well, a that's trailer. HBO. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, that's okay. They can hire me. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, work, I'll work for HBO. I concede. I, um, we got this. I'll sell out to make them a new trailer, even though the, <laughs> the movie's already released. I will redo the trailer so that they yeah, know right. that for future dramas, they need Kelly to cut their trailers together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I would piece together the parts that were about her fighting for a generation right okay about her representing like the that is dramatic as that moment when he was on the court with venus and telling her like you are not just representing you you are going to be out there fighting for every little i was bawling so powerful (laughs) and um it's so hard right and i feel like that was a lot more like what the movie was about and Yes. you know and like, so putting cutting together a trailer that showcases that uh-huh and um using as well as using the uh the home footage the IRL home footage yeah, yeah. okay cutting cutting that together as a trailer okay and then selling it like it's supposed to be a documentary mm-hmm. you know is is uh is is deceptive in a fun way you yeah. know what I mean? It's not like they're not going to be upset they didn't see a documentary. Right. But they're like, right. this, it's so inspired and true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's so honest and raw. And like uh, from someone who consumes a lot of classic literature, from that point of view, Rene Descartes is a philosopher as well. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. Um, he had put out a book called Confessions and he like talks about his, it's basically his life story. But he lays out what he did in such a way like, there it is. This is what I did. You know, like I, I had a woman, I got her pregnant. I left her and I gave her such and such money mm-hmm. and I paid her. Mm-hmm. So, so to raise her baby on her own, he lays it out there raw and lets you make the judgment. Right. He doesn't, he doesn't try to um, justify what he did. Mm-hmm. He doesn't rationalize it. He just tells you what he did. Doesn't and that's you. what they do with Richard. Like they're trying to show us him as plain as he can be. <sighs> And that like desperation part, I feel like that's where we started in the movie. The montage yeah. of him going to trainer to trainer mm-hmm, to trainer, mm-hmm, all of these mm-hmm. sa- hearing no, 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 yeah. and continuing to push until he heard a yes. That's what we do in film all yeah. the time. Yep. <laughs> Actors, directors, writers, yeah. doesn't matter what it is, always hearing no. And so that 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 was really personal too. Yeah. And so 
not really knowing what, even after seeing the trailer six times, <laughs> not knowing what this movie was about before I watched it. Right. We had brought it up and attached it as the recent movie to ask, is it black exploit? And it's very clear it is not. Nope. Right? Yeah. Not black exploit in any way. Um, yeah. So I could I couldn't even think of like a um devil's advocate argument to to suggest it might be black exploit, you know? Yeah, can't even think you can't even think I couldn't of even one. think of one. Like yeah. I can't. No, it's well, I mean I, I tried. Like I I mean I I really wanted to kind of approach it from both sides and I just no, I, I I couldn't think of anything. I yeah. I felt like it was very real. I don't feel like there were any of those. Not like, unless you take an ignorant perspective and go, well, there's black people in it. Right. Yeah. I guess, right. I guess <laughs> if you look at it that way. Hey, some of those black people were gangsters. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't. I I yeah. No. I I thought I thought it was done very well, and you know, you could tell that it wasn't just BS virtue signaling. You know, I like. I especially love. I've mentioned this on other podcasts and other things in the past, but um, there's a huge amount of like uh white savior syndrome in hollywood media and i feel like they did not have that yes they had white coaches but, but this is the but point. at the end of the okay. day like rick they, they weren't the here they weren't the heroes also it was true Richard stories Williams. yeah i mean also a true story they didn't yeah. you know it's it wasn't a fictional story where they created a white savior well even in to, to come like, in and step in with the money this is what actually happened well e like, even with like <laughs> by, well, like even with stuff like that sometimes they do and that, that's why that's yeah. why it's called white yeah, savior yeah. syndrome yeah, because it's like right. you, you can't you can't allow that your main hero um, no, the idea was you can't allow that your main hero is not a white person that's helping, right. you know, it, it's very offensive. I mean, and then also you have to look at, you know, there wouldn't slash couldn't have been a black tennis coach anyways. There just, right. There wasn't well, yeah, These, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they broke open, through. Yeah. They're the ones who opened the door for that in the first place. Yeah, I get, there no, just yeah. wasn't one. Yeah, you know, and, and, so, and so you, you have get to have a those really characters. tan Spaniard. Well, and I mean, we we talked about this with <laughs> yeah, we talked we talked about this with Amish, right? You know, and he was like, you know, depending on the time, like the only people that were in positions of power to help were white Horrible. people. Yeah, right. you know, and you know, like I don't think Django Unchained was a white savior because at the end of the day, Django was the hero, right? He was right. he was let out of you know his slavery. Well, I, but and again, you'd have to take a look at the the. Again, the times, right? Okay. Exactly. Would well, there, would there yeah. have been a black savior available that wasn't no. working I mean, in Django, government and still basically subservient? Like, oh, look at the smart black person. Yeah, that's you know that's right. What they did. Back that's then. what that's what they did. Now that's what I'm saying. That's why I said it's not like that. Did not fall into that trap because even right. though initially he was saved by a white person, he ends up being the hero. And okay, well, and, Django and Shane is super recent. So yeah. real quick, <laughs> let's let's let's. Uh, what I have here, ten years about ago, about black <laughs> exploit for those who don't know, is credited to have began in 1971. Credited to have mm -hmm. began, even though there were black exploit films before that. Yeah. Um, yeah. and the turn was basically coined in 1972 by someone in hollywood junius griffin okay there we go nice Thank and he, he was offended by it because of the way it proliferated offenses yeah offensive stereotypes of blacks right i wrote that down Mom. so did i oh, that's what i exactly <laughs> that is exactly what i had yeah. right here written down wow Cheater. we read the same wikipedia article we did. <laughs> <laughs> at least we're honest about yeah. it uh yeah so that kind of covers what it is in a basis. Do you think that sums it up well? I mean, yeah, from a technical standpoint, that's, you know, kind of what the um, perception of yeah. those films were back then. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it really was a, a more of a perception type of thing, I yeah. think, for that time. Mm -hmm. Um. What I think, and, and, and it's very similar to today. Right. Um, because what these um, individuals were, they were, they were just independent filmmakers. Right. You know, Gord, Gordon Parks, you know, Melvin Van Peoples, you know, they, they made these films, Sweet, you know, Black Badass Song and Shaft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they made them with their own money. Um, yes. Rudy, Ray, Rudy Ray Moore, Dolomite. I don't know if you guys saw the Eddie Murphy biopic of it yet. Um, 
Oh yeah, but, I forgot you did that. No, I've not watched that yet. No, yeah. I know what you're yeah, talking no, about. No. though. yeah, de- definitely, definitely check it out. Um, Eddie Murphy, he's playing Rudy Ray Moore, right? And how Rudy Ray Moore created Dolomite. And that and was on. That's on Amazon. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, because yeah, it's okay. on Amazon. And I mean, and it's just it's they were just indie filmmakers. They they got their friends together, you know. Um, they got like minded. Str- strangers together mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they used a lot of their own money they used their friends houses and cars well, that sounds and, crazy you know who, who would do that who would do such a thing and <laughs> right and they made and they made a movie and it and they were successful the movies were successful because there weren't any <laughs> you know films that had you know black stars and or, or prominently black right. actors in it mm-hmm. or you know black crew you know, at that, you know, for that time, you know, and also because of the subject matter of the films, you know, the, the few films that did have black actors in them, you know, as, as you already know, the, were you know, they were, yeah, you know, they were, <laughs> right, exactly, they were subservient or they, you know, or mm-hmm. they were like in, in the background, they were sidekicks, you know, yeah, or, they were, or they were like silly, they were like silly butlers and yeah, you know, whatever. Right. Right, yeah. right, 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 exactly. You know, and, and these type of films, they, you know, were, and, and the, the reason why NAACP had a problem initially with mm-hmm. um, these type of films back then was because it was mainly because of the Mac. Okay. Right. Um, which once again <laughs> it's, it's it's perception because right. the back was in essence just a a, a gangster film mm-hmm. really that that's all it was mm-hmm. you know around the same time another gangster film came out called the godfather yeah. okay right. but you didn't hear italians complaining about it being you know stereotypical or right. you know or, They're or, proud of it. or any of that yeah, yeah or, or any of that nonsense it's you know, it, it's it's re, it's really it was really just certain people's, you know, perspe- perspective, mm-hmm. you know, how they're viewing themselves, right? You know, and how they want to the other people to view them instead of it just being okay. This is just a movie about this particular subject, right? You know, but it does not represent all of us as a whole Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and you know what all that subgenre was during the early 70s it was just a bunch of you know indie filmmakers just trying to make it a a lot like what you know we're we've done Mm -hmm. essence Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) it's what it was Mm -hmm. and it, it became like everything else, it as it you know progressed as the years passed. Yes, it did start becoming stupid. <laughs> you know, right. once mm-hmm. Hollywood really because, started getting involved, once Hollywood started to see that these films were actually making money. 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 Oh, well, they're making money. Let's do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Then they started trying to you know make their own versions. Of course, mm-hmm. not with black directors. Right, you yeah. know, right. <laughs> we, we, we can't, we can't right. have that. <laughs> right, yeah, or producers, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 the movies just started getting just stupid, like Black Mama, White Mama, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and all, you know, and 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 just all this this crazy nonsense, and and the and the dumb sequels, you know, I, to you know the or, yeah. original, you know, films from the early seventies, right. and you know. I, the same thing happens now, pretty much. Oh yeah, you know. So, so what you're saying, <laughs> what, what I'm gathering, what you're saying about mm-hmm. the criticisms in the early '70s about black exploitation films, okay, is that fake news started then? <laughs> yeah, they go. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Like, nice. yeah. So even yeah, if, prob- there propaganda. News, to yeah. be fair, propaganda has been around since the beginning it, of time, it right? Sure it, has. It, has. Yes. it has. And this is just. Yeah, and I, I agree. It, it it comes down to how you can, you know, the only thing I found offensive about black exploit films is that when I was looking at the ones made in the seventies, I can't say some of those titles. 
right <laughs> right getting exactly slapped, at least, you know right. without getting slapped that was the most right. that was the only offensive thing i saw I was like i can't say that title i'm not allowed to say that title anyway but 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 once again those I, and i know what you're talking about those didn't come along until later and a lot of those were from the big that, studio that was trying right. to market right. yeah right. That, that, was, that was trying right. to cash in on the marketability right which is a, right exactly yeah which is an excellent segue into the fact that i realized my exposure to black exploit seems to basically be hollowed away hollywood right. parodies mm-hmm. that is my that is my exposure to black exploit and it's, films. it's it's like that um which is both to me is odd and offensive just for the simple fact that from what i understood from the textbook very textbook definition mm-hmm. okay is that most of what's come out of hollywood has been parodies of black exploit but the whole point of black exploit was to exalt them as heroes so right. to parody that is to make fun of the fact that we can see black people as heroes yes right and the fact that that's what hollywood is mass producing mm-hmm. i find incredibly offensive and it's um, probably a you know at least slightly intentional yeah well I mean, right it, it, i think in a uh, get out sort of fashion right right in the liberal racism sense mm-hmm. that it is um but and and, and- Get Out is a perfect example of what is a black kind of a black exploitation film in mm-hmm. in the sense that the theme was a, a black man, yeah, you know, yeah. being attacked by white people, mm-hmm. him rising up mm-hmm. and defending himself and killing off his his white oppressors. Right, right, right. <laughs> that, right. that is that is so a seventies so, black film. Right, <laughs> right. Right. Okay, so that, and, that answers that, one of our questions. Yeah, that was that was the theme. You yeah. know, but it was, but it wasn't, it wasn't buffoonish. It wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, it took itself genuinely. It wasn't right. It, it, right. Exactly. It, mm-hmm. Right. It, it took itself genuinely. You mm-hmm. know, it, it made an effort to be a real horror movie as mm-hmm. opposed to, you know, well, and still like, be a cultural reflection and still, right. right. And still be, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. But without pushing it in your face. You know, it was mm-hmm. everything was very subtle with it in a in a really good way. Yeah, it, 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 it allowed the yeah, why. yeah. <laughs> where right, it allowed the viewer to kind of yeah. let it seep into their consciousness about you know what was going on. And, mm-hmm. and it was just subtle enough for actual liberal racists to be like, he's right. right, you know, black is the new sheep. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man yeah so okay so that that answers one of our questions mm-hmm. what would black exploit today look like and get out sounds like a perfect example right? yeah, yeah, yeah yeah those yeah, are kind of my out. thoughts like tyler perry movies jordan peele movies that okay that was it, it would you consider like medea in the tyler perry movies black exploit or is it hollywoodized black exploit well i mean M- the medea so you're gonna get people out so there the now. Thing, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing with Medea, which what you got to remember, is that that started off as a stage play, mm-hmm. and then that was adapted into film. Mm-hmm. So, with stage plays, uh, especially black stage plays, have have always kind of been that. Yeah. You know, um, stage black theater has always been very larger than life, and they've always had these very heavy religious Mm -hmm. and love themes. They've always had that one character um, and pretty, you know, that is kind of larger than life. You know, that was like for Tyler Perry, that was his Medea character. Right. Medea in the stage plays, Medea was really just, and in the films too, the earlier films, Medea was just meant as comic relief. Right. 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 Because those films were dramatic. Diary of a Black Mad Black Woman, that was a mm-hmm. dramatic film. You know, if you take Medea out of Diary of a Mad Black Woman, if you take Medea completely out, if she never existed, you never even knew that character was even around, Diary of a Mad Black Woman would have just been just a straight up drama, straight up right. drama, drama about, you know, a uh, married couple having issues, you know, but because of Medea's presence in it, that offered you know, the added kind of comic relief. And so 
um, w- once again, comic, you know, comedy is subjective, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. um, some people really like that type of comedy, and some people don't. Right. Right. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, but but once again, you know, because it's something I think that people just weren't used to, and and don't understand the origins of it from it jumping to a play to a film, you know, I think that's where people kind of started to look at it as exploitive. But I, I never saw, you know, the early films with Medea in them as exploitive. I just looked mm-hmm. at them as dramatic films with a comic relief character that was, yeah. that Tyler Perry kind of made into an ongoing, you know, character theme and right. then eventually he formed films around Medea f- making them into full blown mm-hmm. you know comedies um in which I'm not a fan of necessarily I'm I've, right. I've never been a big fan of the um Medea movies just just you know that that type of comedy is just not my my type of comedy yeah, right yeah. you know I'm more of the school of like Monty Python yeah um, that's what I'm talking about and um you know but like I said, you know, I mean, th- there's a place for it. It's it's comedy, for sure. you, know? Yeah, you know, and it's one of those things. It's like big ups to Tyler Perry for finding something marketable, right? That, yeah, that right, he can, yeah. And where, where he can sustain that audience. Well, and, and it's and it's marketable, marketable across, like I don't want to say racial spectrums. That sounds a little dramatic, but you know, like you you mentioned earlier about how um, most of the black exploit stuff you have you were familiar with growing up was the Hollywood version, not the actual mm-hmm. stuff made by by black people. I was the same way. Most <laughs> people, yeah. well, <clears throat> most most white people are the same way. Like I, I, um, and I don't know. Maybe maybe you can speak to this, um, Lawrence. I, I'm not sure, but I know a few years ago I was listening to. Um, it, it was for some reason it was on a sports center radio show, but they they were talking about how like their top twenty like movies growing up. Um, they were reading off of a list that was very like uh, Christmas Story and. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, home alone and and you know like very very white white centric audience movies and you know the black co-host was like i've only heard of like three of those films and they're all stuff that i'm like nodding like yeah i remember that film i remember that film and then she was like and and, you know and so the white one white co-host was like okay so what do you remember and he started listing off these things and i had not heard of any of them and it's you know he's roughly the same age we are he's probably 35 36 whatever um but yeah i mean you're just you're introduced to an entirely different set of movies, which to me Thanks. made me kind of upset because it's just like, and I guess it's, it's part of its marketing to a specific demographic, but I, I think right. that's a little bit wrong, but. And see, and, and I'm glad that you brought that up because a perf- another perfect example of a parallel of the Medea character, you can go and look at pretty much Adam Sandler films. Or Jim Carrey. Or Jim right? Carrey. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, these larger than life, really over the top, you know, characters mm-hmm. that both Jim Carrey and Adam mm-hmm. Sandler have played in, in mm-hmm. their films. Mm-hmm. But nobody, you know, complains that either of them are, you know, embarrassing. Perpetuating white stereotypes. <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. You know, so I... It's it's like with with comedy, I I always give comedy and comedians, you know, um, really wide girth, yes. you know, because yeah. um, it's just you know, different people just just like different things, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's yeah, and like you said, with you know, the, like Christmas story, I I love Christmas story. <laughs> you know, I I, I like love comedies right up our alley. Though, right, right, yeah, yeah, right. right, 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 exactly. You know, but I'm sure that there are other films, you know, that I've never seen, you know, before too. You know, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. they weren't marketed to you specifically, like right, 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 yeah. us. Oh, yeah. Josh, Josh, right, Josh exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm just I'm just speaking factually. I'm, <laughs> I'm I, maybe not factually, but yeah, it's it's my observance at least. You it's know, a like podcast. it's 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 almost it's it's almost like two different universes that movies are being made, right? You know, it's yeah, a multiverse yeah, sure. of yeah. Hollywood. 
Yeah, multiverse <laughs> of Hollywood. Oh gosh, coining that now. Right. Yeah. Like well, we all know who Spike Lee is, you know. Yeah. But I yeah, could yeah, probably yeah. count on one hand the amount of films I've actually seen of his. Not that I don't like him, it's right. just like I'm not as exposed. You know, I don't know. After um, after working uh, for a couple of years in Chicago with mm-hmm. Lawrence and other associates, I you know I've kind of got this weird boycott going on with with uh, with Spike Lee. Um, <laughs> okay, I mean that's over fair. The, over the shy right, I boycott Woody Allen. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I was I mean, just thinking about Woody Allen. When he, <laughs> I was think I was thinking to myself, I was like, I I hate that I can't not like Annie Hall and Crimes and Misdemeanors. Oh, but Annie and, Hall is so good. You know, Match Point. Right, exactly. That, it was that was like, before he did his bad things, right? Like that was right, 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 exactly. Like that took place yeah. before, so that's still okay. I, I get it. So, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's right. Just, as, as long as it's before, we're good. He, was, okay, he wasn't good. a scumbag yet, right? It's, it's right, no okay, good. It's good. no different than me <laughs> jamming know. out to Robert's jams on Thursdays and Sunday nights at the skating rink. Right, you know, right. Nothing <laughs> keeps me from skating to Robert, all right? Nothing <laughs> keeps me from skating to Mr. Robert. Um, right, and then, uh, but yeah, like what you were saying about... Uh, Oh crap! I lost my train of thought because I started thinking. About started it. Oh, I was about with no with Spike Lee. You know, oh, yeah. out of respect for Melvin. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, out of respect for Melvin. Uh, it's like, yeah, sorry. is there a story to this that I'm not aware of? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's kind of indie world film drama about Hollywood yeah. stealing from oh, indie, that independent filmmakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I I personally Never just like Spike story. Lee because I was a huge Indiana Pacer fan growing up. And oh yeah, so he and Reggie, whole Miller Reggie Miller are thing. like arch nemesis. Oh, so <laughs> oh, you got to put that behind you. I never. He hasn't. <laughs> I won't until he does. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, so then, then, so the, all of this kind of sort of poses the question. All right. Did we, as in the world, have to parody black exploit in order to make it accessible to a wider audience? Mm. Right. And I think, I think our li- listing the. This is hard convo time right now. No, but no. but <laughs> I, I, on the contrary, when you take a look at. Django Unchained mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Get Out by Jordan Peele, like mm-hmm. not necessarily. Okay, I mean because as as Hollywood as those films might have been, take a look at their artistic direction. Right. You know, and I think well, those I, are I know, maybe I'll, may, maybe I'll get like crucified for nope. this, but like I would put probably Black Panther under that as well. Like it's not it's not a parody. It's not I mean, making you're right. fun it's of. It's not a parody. Yeah. I mean, okay. it is it is an Avengers movie, I guess. But I mean, it's and, just like, and, and it did rally a lot. of It people. did. It was like culturally, it was very yeah. relevant. There, and, there are people who are still hashtagging Wakanda forever. Right. Yeah. Um, you sorry, Lawrence. You were going to say. No, I was saying. You know, those were only those were only two films. And right. Only, that and, was uh, the next point I was going to make. Yeah. Is, I'm and, just saying uh, we have we have examples of how it can be done. Right. Yeah. No. 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 Ab- absolutely. It's just you know Hollywood's willingness mm-hmm. to do it to you know to greenlight films along those lines. You know because um, most you know Hollywood execs they're you know they're going to lean more toward what they think is going to be more commercially you know right. successful and f- and for them they they feel that's something that's gonna appeal to mm-hmm. white audiences and not alienate what they think is going to alienate white audiences right you know is what they're going to lean to more and and if it's something that could potentially make you know a black person you know not look in the best light you know then they'll they'll do that you know they they, right. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have a problem with that it, right. it's 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 either it's either going to be something to make, you know, white audiences feel good or guilty. You right. know? And I, and those, I think it's, those are the two things that they go for. They go for good. They go uh-huh. for guilt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. They go white for making you feel powerful. bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They go for making you feel bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That would be that would be the twelve years of slave was the white guilt one, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. or, or, or the help, the help, Dad, the help. Um, the I think the help was like gives. I was I was watching oh. the help like <laughs> again that kind of goes a little bit into a little bit into like white savior because at the end of the day like 
what got them out of their situation or whatever, what helped them achieve their goals was the white girl writing the oh, book about the it. writer. The book right. Writer, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. and I, I get that's based on a book, so well, it's, it is what it is, but. And again, the, I mean, you know, again, with, this is where um, historical, you know, mm-hmm. fiction writers kind of get off or, or even nonfiction writers is that in that time period, mm-hmm. there were only white right. saviors who had the power to help. Right. And I, I mean, and which I, is right. bullshit. It sucks. Right. It yeah. sucks, but it's just the yeah. reality of the times. And I get that. Now, so, so I'm saying like the white, sa- yeah, the white savior can be a problem. It doesn't necessarily mean it always is. Yeah. Just like black exploit films could be problematic. It doesn't mean they always are. It just, it just yeah. kind of depends on, does it make sense with the media you're putting out? Or is it like you're just trying to jam? Um, oh, this white person is not so bad. So, you know, whatever. So you don't have to be mad at white people for, you know, whatever. You know, and I, I, I don't, I can't think of any better examples. We just mentioned the help, and that just popped into my head. Yeah, right. Okay, so then, well, you know what, what Hollywood does with their, their format is this kind of copying hits. Yep. You mm-hmm. know, if mm-hmm. something, if a, if if a particular theme, you or, don't say. Um, <laughs> right, <laughs> is popular. How, then how, how many? Know, the, <laughs> I was say, how, how many how many other franchises try has started trying to make like uh, connected universes oh, since MCU? Right. <laughs> yes, yeah. Like they're like, oh, we all want our own MCU, and you know they all pretty much fail, except right. Fast and the Furious for some reason. I don't know how that's still going, but yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, just crazy. it's like with you know with with the slavery movies, you know, you mm-hmm. have you know the first you know, kind of really good slave film and then, you know. And then they'll take off from that. They, it takes, you know, their millions. Um, Boys in the Hood came out and um, actually when Boys in the Hood came out, everybody kind of just thought it was a fluke mm-hmm. because before Boys in the Hood, it was Colors. Right. And Colors oh, was supposed wow. to, was, that film was supposed to helm the whole Hood movie Right, genre, subgenre, right. but it didn't, mm-hmm. you know, because Colors was not about the hood, it was about the two police about officers, police. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you know, and then when Boys in the Hood came out and that, you know, blasted out box office records and it was critically claimed, and mm-hmm. you know, all of that, you know, and then it was like, ah, oh, well, you know, we're still not sure. And then they did Men's Society, right? You know, and then it was like, okay, now we know this is the formula that we need to, to go by. Not right. what we did with colors, but what they did with Boys in the Hood and Men's mm-hmm. Society. Mm-hmm. So then after Men's Society, then you had all these little hood films start popping up that were nowhere oh, yeah. near as good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Movies and yeah. <laughs> right, right. You're right. But, ABC, yeah, this yeah. Sunday. Exactly, right. You know? <laughs> you know, and, and that is a perfect example of mm-hmm. black exploitation. Because, right, right, right. You know, it's just you know Hollywood taking something that was organic and you know mm-hmm. and, and gener- genuine, mm-hmm. and then you know turning it into something that just are making just it Hollywood imitation. <laughs> yeah, th- right. there you go, making it yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood yeah, Hollywood. Well, let's Hollywood let's imitation. let's take the sincerity out of it and just uh, yeah. <laughs> so right. yeah, yeah. There you go. Can we conclude to say that? the large, large, large majority of what Hollywood is doing now in black exploit is racist. What, or I would say that what Hollywood is doing um, as now, as far as with black films, I wouldn't necessarily call it um, racist. I would, you know, just kind of call it I'm lame. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't really have a better word I feel for like... it. Is it's 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 this kind of like like a movie came out like a few years back called A Blind Spot. Blind Spot. Blind Spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And I hated that fucking film. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and, it was, and it was an Oscar bait film, so you know. Oscar yeah, bait. and and it's and it's 
you know, one of the themes of, you know, making white people feel guilty, but then at the same time, not giving the black characters of the film any real justice. Right. You know, mm-hmm. except for making white people feel bad. Right. You know, right. but the white people in the film that are portraying the villains mm-hmm. never receive any real punishment. Re- yeah, they don't get any repercussions for what they do. Right. Either. For what they do, except for feeling bad. Right. At the end. And those oh, are. That'll teach you. <laughs> right, right. Like, <laughs> yeah, like th- those are. Moxie. Right. Yeah. yeah. Th- those film, those types of films, I think mm-hmm. that Hollywood have been churning out more mm-hmm. than any other kind of film lately. Well, because I, I feel like in most cases they get nervous at the idea of having a legitimately evil white person in a black film like that. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just like, we yeah, have J- to Django back off at the end. And, yeah, Django well, yeah. and, and uh, Get Out. Really, mm-hmm. those are only two in the past, what, like right. 15 and, years? Right. And they were not done by you know generic hollywood directors is quentin tarantino right. and jordan Peele, exactly. and they, right. they go out of their way to do things that are different and actually things, not provoking yeah. so. quentin tarantino is exactly. not even black he's not but he actually no, yeah. you know but he's he doesn't give know. a fuck right, but, right. <laughs> he, he well, just but, wants to make authentic films yeah, right um, right mm-hmm. right yeah. well that's the whole he, thing it's he's like, not trying to like he, he make takes, a film by colors you know right well you're <laughs> right, right. He, he takes film he takes what he does seriously mm-hmm. enough to know to also realize that it is for entertainment yeah and it is not right. for everybody right it's, like right. It, exactly he's, yeah he's a very admirable film director mm-hmm. um well you heard it here first quentin you, know, you're, <laughs> you make black exploits films and we love you he's a very big fan of the show so i know he's, he's going to listen to this podcast. Like he'll listen in for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll see the emails about it eventually <clears throat> um yeah so like okay so then is it racist no it's not necessarily but it's lazy yeah um yeah and uh and formulaic like what hollywood does what they're Paint by for. numbers man yeah okay yeah. all right answer well sort of answered that question then um all right so what are your favorite black exploit films um i love the uh shaft movies no those are great um Dolomite is just hilarious. And like I said, when you guys get a chance, go to Amazon and watch Eddie mm-hmm. Murphy's Everyone portrayal does. of Rudy Made More. It, it is hilarious. And it's, and it's also, it's good for independent filmmakers like us to yeah. watch because it's like, you will see the parallels right. to how Rudy Ray Moore back then was trying. Mm-hmm. He, he was just a guy trying to make it. Right. That's all. Rudy Ray Moore, mm-hmm. he was just a guy. He was just a regular guy just trying to make it in the industry any way that he could. And he just, just like what we do, he got his friends together. Mm -hmm. You know, he got some like-minded people. Some of them were cool. Some of them were haters, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And he was (laughs) working one, one of the best scenes of the films, you know, not to spoil too much of it for you, but they're, they're filming and, you know, he's having an argument with the guy that he hired for his direct. He got like a, a name person to direct. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, they're going back and forth over the direction of the film. And, you know, the the director, he's being all kind of, you know, um, above <laughs> everything because yeah. it's not what he's used to. He's used to working on big projects, right, you know, right. all that, you know, and Rudy Ray Moore, he's just like, look, man, we're trying to make something real here for mm-hmm. us. All right. I wrote this film. I'm paying for it with my own money. Right. Okay. And when we're on set, if somebody needs a box moved, I move that fucking box and mm-hmm. I don't have an ego about it. Right. Because we're all in this together. We're and it's together. like, that is what independent filmmaking mm-hmm. is. <laughs> That is, and and the film for me, that that film, it, it is more about the life of an independent filmmaker than it is about, right? You know, a, a black independent filmmaker. Like his story is yeah. indicative of all of our stories. So so mm-hmm. please check it out. It's called Dolomite. It's on Amazon. Please check it out when you get. I Definitely. promise, you won't be disappointed. Absolutely. Yeah, because you know? I remember and, I remember <laughs> like, hearing great things about it when it came out. And I just it just kind of got lost on the shuffle, I guess. But yeah, yeah, yeah and, you know what's so what's interesting. So then. Um, I guess, you know, okay, 
I grew up with a VHS of Boys in the Hood. I, like mm-hmm. I watched all the time growing up. All right. Like it's one of the movies that I grew up with. I didn't, <clears throat> never considered it black exploit, but I guess it is, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then that would be added to my list of mm-hmm. favorite black exploit films of all time. But I had originally written down, I'm going to get you, sucker, and Harlem <laughs> Nights. You know? Like, well, you know, with that, that kind of, yeah. They kind of are parroting black exploit mm-hmm. patient films. They're they're kind of in a way parroting them, but also in a way kind of honoring them too. It's like an right. homage, right? Well, and, yeah, it's like a, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, and you can tell from <laughs> you can tell that it's an homage and a respectful and very well done, fun homage to those films from yes. the the cast alone. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Isaac Hayes, Keenan Keenan yeah. Ivory Wayne's, uh, yeah. Bernie Casey. Like yeah. I love Bernie Casey mm-hmm. and um, like Red Fox, Red Fox. I loved, I also loved like Robert Townsend. In I love Robert did. Townsend. Oh, and no yeah. one ever talks yeah. about him anymore. I don't understand yeah. why that is. Either. Yeah. Um, Probably pissed off Hollywood. Uh, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have a list of your favorite black? I don't have boys? a list, but like I, I liked Meteor Man. Um, Robert Townsend. <laughs> Robert Townsend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, I liked. Uh, I did like. He got game. That was a Spike Lee movie. I did like. But I like basketball. Okay. okay. You know, and you never go wrong with Denzel. Um, <laughs> wow. you know, okay. and then the other one that I grew up watching a lot, and again, this this culturally, and we were. I watched a lot of comedies when I was younger. Was uh, Don't Be a Menace in South Central while drinking your juice. <laughs> yeah, the Wayans, like the Wayans Brothers yeah. movies. Yeah. Yeah, Wayans Brothers look great. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> um. Okay. So, and then uh, we really answered could black exploit be done today right it can it can and then we have some great examples of when it was done Mm -hmm. uh i love that we're including quentin turn i don't know why it just never occurred to me it was like yeah fucking jackie brown yeah Yeah, they even mentioned him in the wikipedia article (laughs) they did they did uh, him doing jackie brown and Django unchained i know when i when i i mean Oh. If if you really want to get deep once upon a time in hollywood i mean yeah they're they weren't black i haven't watched that one but but yeah but the theme of it you mm-hmm. know the level of violence at the mm-hmm. end, which I mean, there's a level of violence in all of his films. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know the the type of kind of cartoon violence, yeah, yeah, is indicative of a of a black that's what right. You yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so he definitely gets a lot of um, inspiration from them. Well, and uh, yeah. well, I mean, and most of his movies have a funk and soul right. soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. A mm-hmm. large majority of them have a funk and soul soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. You know, R and B and funk and soul, those are that's those are my jams. And he made Sam Jackson relevant, so thank you, Quentin. That motherfucker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess one of my final questions here for you, Lawrence, is are your films black exploit? No. No? Pieces of David, not black exploit? No, no, no. You know, Pieces of David is um is a dark comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a dark comedy. I, I would put that in the same vein as something like um, Very Bad Things, okay. the film with um, Christian Slater. I, I love that movie. In the 90s. Yeah, yeah, it's I, such an I, I underrated that, '90s film too. Okay, it is, it is but I do want to point out he didn't have any white girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> he did. What white girlfriend? Remember the the flower chick that came in. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. I was, I was just thinking about main cast, though. <laughs> Not primary guest, though. Okay. All right. Um, Girls and Rodney. Um, you know what? I don't know. I've always kind of looked at that as kind of being more in the family guy kind of realm. And the like, okay. always sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That assessment. Yeah. Kind of feel. Yeah, no, but not really black exploitation. No. Rodney's not a black hero. <laughs> 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 no, no. Rodney's the Charlie Day of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that is for darn sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. Okay, and so and so all of those um, pieces of David is available on Amazon Prime, right? So is uh, Girls and Rodney. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Um, it, Sunshine Day is that one available on Amazon Prime? Yes, it is. Okay, and I I, I don't consider that. It, uh, and no, um, Sunshine Day is on Tubi now. Is on Tubi. Also. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, nice, yes. nice, yeah, nice, nice. That's a free one. So yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet, yeah. sweet. Okay. Um, and so dark hallways that is still in the works correct yes 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 that's being shopped right now okay that's being shot now your most recent shopped. project shop shop oh, shopped okay. around hollywood yeah. gotcha yeah shopped. gotcha okay. gotcha gotcha and but most recently you uh directed a movie called the box by s Carter with uh s carter productions correct yes yeah yeah can you tell us a little bit about that like uh do you have any yeah. anything, idea about release date as well um well we were actually trying to push for this month and and it may still happen uh we're still editing it right. um, but we're close to being done but um yeah it's um it's a dramatic um magical realism type of film hmm. um i don't know if have you ever seen the movie um by bootsy collins it's not i'm sorry not bootsy collins um, <laughs> that's a singer Bootsy, yeah, oh, I forgot. I forgot the guy's last name. He he do, he he wrote and directed. Um, sorry to bother you. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's kind of in that kind of feel realm, you know. Um. It's. It's it's kind of hard to describe. You really <laughs> you really have to see it for yourself. It mm-hmm. it it will definitely. It's it would definitely kind of blow your mind, you know, um, to, and you, you would want to watch it high <laughs> to enhance the experience. <laughs> you don't have to, you'll still get a good experience, but if you, if you also watch it while you're smoking weed, it will really send you on a trip. <laughs> so so it's, it's kind of a trippy film. So, yeah. Well, no, I, I had, um, when I had, uh, I had sent in my demo reel and, um, resume for it. When I did, I got the impression that it had some, uh, erotica. Yes. Going on. Yes. Yeah? Yes. It, it, nice. yeah, it is. It is. Erotica. Erotica. Right. <laughs> erotica. Right. Yes. It, 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 it is. It is. Hey, our, it is. our most, our most watched <laughs> podcast episode on YouTube is the one we talk about best sex scenes in films. Yeah, where we talk about our favorite sex scenes in films. Those poor bastards don't realize we don't show clips. You're, you're yes. gonna, you're gonna, you're well, you're you're gonna get your fill of sex scenes in this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I imagine so. Yeah, I imagine so. And so, and uh, we got some pretty good. I, as a matter of fact, I I probably have to go through the the rough edit a couple of more times to maybe take some stuff out so we can get like an R rating and not an X rating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty um yeah. pretty graphic. Yeah. <laughs> pretty graphic. But it's good. It's good. Yeah. It looks it, look, it looks really good. <laughs> you might want to have a bib on while you watch right. it just a little bit um for the drooling part. <laughs> the drooling aspect. And so and just to clarify for those who are listening and not watching, I mean you, if, if, even if you're not watching and you can't see it spelled that's box b-o-x-x-x correct yep. the box oh that's awesome um and when that releases what platform should people be looking for that on um i think it's going to be like a, i think it's going to be a netflix release that's what i heard too yeah yeah so yeah okay Sweet. Excellent. All right. So you're there, the box on Netflix. Um, and at this point, we kind of roll out the red carpet for you, Lawrence. Uh, if there's uh what why don't you tell our audience, all 12 of them, um, what we've got, what you've got 18. going on in your life. It's 18. grown. Okay, it's grown it's a little grown. bit. Um, what you've got going on in your life, uh, aside of the box, um, and what we people can where people can reach you via social media, et cetera. Oh, I mean, you know, my, my social media is um, my name pretty much on all my platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Lawrence Lee Wallace. My website is my company's name. My company is Deep Production Studios. Sorry, I didn't mention uh, that. Yes. And the Deep website is deepproductionstudios.com. I saw the logo. Um, that was nice when you were signing on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, yeah, so, you know, right now, like I said, a, a film that um, I wrote um, with my uh, former business partner, Angela Cobb, um, The Dark Hallways. 
it's a horror anthology. Mm. And um, that's currently, you know, being shopped, you know, around Hollywood. We have had some interest. We do have um, name talent attached, you know, to the film. And um, yeah, so right now it's just kind of a, a waiting game to see if we're able to get a green lit and um, go into production on it. Sweet. Okay. Nice. We'll be looking forward to seeing yeah. it. And this yeah, is the little girl in white, uh, which you mentioned before, mm-hmm. was um, actually it is part of the film's um, anthology. It is one of the stories, um, but we made it as a proof of concept to you know help get it picked up. So right. You know, um, won a bunch of film festivals. Mm-hmm. You know when we put it out, um, got a lot of views on YouTube. You know thousands of views on YouTube and doing really well so you know all that really you know contributed to it so yeah that's where we're at on that right now all right well and we're going to make sure we include <laughs> links to uh, all of the projects we mentioned yeah as well as deep production studios in the show notes as well mm-hmm. and uh i guess we want to thank you for coming on with us Lewis. oh yeah we uh yeah, yeah thank you for having wanted, me. we wanted to allow for an hour and a half just in case we really yeah. got into it Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> we, we still did. We were just synced about it. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. We there wasn't a lot of uh, argument and argue, uh, arguing, so that was good, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> right. No, um, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you're wrong. It's like, yeah, well, we, d- we didn't end up having our get out moment where we yeah. had to admit we were liberal racists. <laughs> right. turns, out, turns out we're pretty right. reasonable individuals after right. all. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's good to hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Years of intentional training Years got us. Got us there. Right. I mean, we grew up. We grew up in Cookmo, Indiana. That's all I got to say about that. So yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Which is interesting. We should. Um, we should. I feel like there's not enough uh, knowledge about how really bad Kokomo was in the '90s. When right. We growing up, it was still. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you know, we ended segregation in the in the '60s. And well, we did it, no. No, but, <laughs> right? But just what I'm saying, and it, and it took 30 years yeah. for the schools in downtown mm-hmm. Kokomo to finally stop segregating. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, it's pretty bad. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, and let's see, do we have we have specific things we want to talk about? Where are, um, what are our plugs? Uh, the DMing for theater. You can you can plug that. That's coming yeah. up soon. Yeah. Well, mainly because I don't know if. The majority of our audience, I guess it is Indiana, really, mm-hmm. besides like some Spaniards and stuff that listen yeah, to us. Yeah, some random people some in Spain. Some <laughs> random Spaniards that listen to the podcast. Thank you, Which, Spain. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, <laughs> besides that, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, DMing for theater. That's a... Uh, that's a fundraiser that we're having coming up for Fourth Wall Players in which um, us as an acting troupe will be turning Shakespearean tales into playable Dungeons and Dragons 5e tabletop experiences. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. We're yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that'll be performed. So the, the DMs are the actors from the troupe themselves mm-hmm. uh, who are also, well, at, by the time of the <laughs> by the time of the fundraiser will be experienced yeah. Dungeons and Dragons oh. players. We've got a newbie over I'm here. Gonna ha- I'm going to need a montage. He's going to need a montage. We're going to need a training music. montage. Yeah, we're going to need the training montage. Um, and as always, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, exactly. Um, and so let's see, I guess. And we also have the company. We have the company. And um, then... Yeah, which we, we should be continuing production on within the next month, mm-hmm. as well as a bunch of little uh, skits and mm. shorts that should be coming from fourth wall players. Yeah, and finally, also on the fourth wall players side, we will be doing a summer show. Uh, we're going to be kind of semi-traveling uh, Kokomo, Indy, uh, well, Westfield, I guess, technically. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah. look at an Indy location and a Peru location as well to see if we can add those. It's going to be the importance of being earnest. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, by the time this releases, there'll probably be announcements for auditions already. But yeah. Uh, it'll be May second and May 9th at a Foster Park stage. So, so if we get rained out, that lo- our backup location is the Kokomo Library, just a few blocks mm-hmm. away. At six thirty. At six thirty, folks. Um, and this has been the Get to the Point Review podcast. Get to the Point Review and stuff. Yeah, we. I, I'm not going to sing. And stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to sing. Uh, yeah, and stuff. It's my usual filler. It is. You st- things and stuff really and stuff is. and things. Stuff and stuff and stuff. I don't know what things you're stuffing, but. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, after six kids, it shouldn't be that hard to figure out. Um, all right. So, zing. 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 Ow. Uh, well, thank you all for being here, and we'll see you guys next time. Yep. Get to the point.